to me, art is not just a by the way. Artists themselves have a lot to play, and this is uh, something to do with the way they carry themselves. It is a serious profession, and it depends how far someone wants to take it. The sky is the limit. After my bachelor's degree, I started painting professionally. Uh, that is in 2005. In Uganda, I wanted to document my country. So I try to capture the uniqueness of every single landscape I pick on to paint and add a bit of artistry around it to make it interesting. But going back to documentation, some of the things are going to go away eventually. We cannot live uh, like this forever. So for me, it's a, a diary of all these images that are before us now that probably are going to be extinct in a few years. For me, I prefer to paint in complete seclusion. I don't want anyone around me when I'm painting. My studio is at home. Basically, it's a garage converted into a studio. I hope to get a better space than this. I would want a fridge somewhere in the corner with a few cold ones. <laughs> but for now, it's okay. This is okay, and it was, it, it, it's okay. My exhibition, Yoga Centric. It's been quite tricky with this exhibition because normally I have an exhibition at Womoja, and this is my Kampal exhibition uh, once a year, and it's supposed to be at the end of April. Like you know, COVID-19 hit around March, and the entire country was under lockdown. The exhibition couldn't go ahead, and eventually I sat down and reorganize myself and uh, use the circumstances at hand to rebrand that exhibition, that entire exhibition around what is happening. It was a bit brave, you know, to try and do an exhibition in this, uh, this kind of circumstances. But I just wanted to get it out of my system because I prepared for that and I have the work and I, I thought I'll just put it out there and see and see what happens. Umoja is, uh, is my home in terms of art. The people who have conceived this idea of such a space, to be honest, are personal friends. We have a history from the art school. It feels natural for me to exhibit my work there because they, first of all, they give a room uh, to many starting young artists uh, to show their work. And this for me is appealing uh, because I know it's not easy to start you know, as an artist. And it is priceless to have a space where they believe, first of all, they believe in you and they can give you room uh, to show your work. Pricing of art is a, it's a very controversial subject, but I'll try to speak for myself <laughs> how I go around that. This is the yardstick for uh, setting up prices. You start from the bottom, going up. For me, it's a feeling of how much I have put in. There are so many things that go into this. Research, that's one. And the time, the dedication, and the love uh, to, to produce the best possible at that time. It's not easy to put a price on that, to be honest, but it is a business at the end of the day that you have to put a figure. And this is probably dependent on your branding and the quality you have built over the years. and. Uh, you need to earn a few things to deserve that. You don't wake up and just say, now I'm selling this amount. It does not work like that. I usually have two exhibitions every year. So I usually take a healthy break in between these two exhibitions to usually to do a bit of traveling and see new places. Uh, and these new places represent inspiration, new motifs. You know, you come back to the studio refreshed and you have more, uh, you have new ideas that probably are exciting uh, to work on. I like a place called Lamo. It's one of the few places in Africa that I would say are still original. There's a homely feeling in this place and the landscapes, of course, are off the charts. Uh, it has a special culture, of course, it's a Swahili culture, architecture, food, language. Uh, fashion, music, name it. It has a very special uh, a culture that is still intact. I don't know why, 
but it's still very original to me. And this is uh, the energy, the energy I feed on as an artist. But I like Ginger as well. Ginger Town in particular is a place that you would say it's stuck back in time. Ginger could be, you take a photo of Ginger now, it could be a photo taken back in the 60s. It's still the same. Supporting the arts are going forward. I think the government needs to come on board. They didn't realize the potential in the arts. And of course, being in a, a country like Uganda, where we have a lot of unemployment, and if young people have chosen this as an avenue uh, to, to make a living, there should be subsidies on uh, things like uh, art materials. There should be uh, subsidies, name it tax, ETC, on places like galleries where these people show their work. So many things can be done to, uh, to help and uh, make the arts uh, blossom. I believe art works hand in hand with uh, tourism. And um, if you encourage tourism by default, the arts industry will blossom. And uh, supporting tourism means marketing the country, marketing the culture, and marketing everything Uganda. By default, you can't go wrong when you do that. The art will just come just along with that. <laughs>